Previously on Brookside. Smoked this before? He said there was Keep more. your fat nose out of my fucking business. You're always a loser on drugs, aren't you? Oh! Just seen a couple of scallies go your back fence. Oh. Look, I don't they want whackers. They'll just give us a buzz, keep us sharp, and when Stewie comes in, we'll get off. It's a boy. Hey, the drinks are on me! Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be the worst disguise I've ever seen. What are you doing? What's going on? Get off! Get off! If they were going to finish me, they'd have done it near a home. Michaelson would have done, I'm sure. But what about Sinnifield, that guard fella? Would he do something like this? If he did, he'd want it done well away, wouldn't he? Look, I'm pulling in all the favours now. I want the bastard sorting out by the morning, but I'll be sorting you. OK? I did him. He's just gonna bide this time till he can have us all, I know. That was Christy. <laughs> Not good. He's passing a lot of blood. They think he might have a tear in his kidney. Can we do anything? <sighs> well, the doctor said they're gonna monitor him for now, but... Well, he's probably gonna need an operation. Oh, he's in a right mess. You should have left it to the police. Yeah, well, the police don't give a toss. Oh, they've got to prioritise the world, what they've said. And how many kids are gonna be hooked on drugs in the meantime, eh? You shouldn't have gone steaming in there like a bunch of half-begged vigilantes. And what else are we supposed to do? They're beating up our neighbours, he's, he's selling drugs, the police have got priorities. Yeah, well, Jimmy was right. He's like a cancer and we tried to cut him out. Yeah, and now we're living in fear in our own house. Oh, well, tell me about it. I want to get away from here. I want us all away from here. How can we? The incinerator's blighted this place. We'll only get peanuts. I don't care. We don't have to start renting again. We can never buy. Then let's sell to the incinerator, not everybody else's. They're giving a good price. I'm not having it. I'm not having them or him push us out. Look, uh, just drop me off. But I don't care where we are. I'll get myself back. No hard feelings, eh, lads? Look, as far as I'm concerned, the last six months is amnesia. Last six years, if you like. I know nothing about Sinico. I know nothing about Michelson. So, from now on, I'll just give me gobs, shall yeah? Right? Listen. I can't get hold of our Steve. He's in Wales. What's he doing there? No wonder I can't get hold of him. He had a row with Kirsty Gordon and went off with him. It's some job with her limo. After everything that's gone on, we need him here. Just feel a lot safer with Steve and Tim around. It'd all be a lot safer if we sold up and moved out. I've just phoned the estate agent. You what? They're still offering the full market price. I'm not having them push us out. How can we live here? Look, houses all boarded up. This place is done for. If we don't sell up, there's nothing they can do to get us out. Don't be so stubborn. If we stay here, we'll end up with peanuts eventually. Why is it always us, eh? Why do we always get picked on? And if we stay here, we'll still have to put up with him from next door. He makes my blood boil. I'd do anything to get him back. Anything. I can't hold it anymore, and I don't want to wet myself, for God's sake! on any at-risk register. Look, you heard what the woman said. It's a procedure, it's a formality, it has to be done. It's not a battered 
kid is not at risk. Ali brought tabs into this house and Luke got hold of him. And it'll never happen again. Too right it won't. Why was Ali so stupid? Because of people like him over there, Michelson. I hate him as much as I hate Dan Morrissey. Dan was never in the same category. It was never anything like that. Oh, yeah? Why's that? He scolded them, treated them like an animal, scared him half to death because he was another fella's son. He was mixed up, he was wrong in the head, that doesn't mean... You hear about it every week, don't you? And how often does it end up with a kid being killed? Well? I know. Nightmare stuff, innit? I want to see here, my kid and me not being able to do anything about it. You know, he's so precious to me, I mean, even more so after this. And after Morrissey and me moving back in with the pair of you. The thought that that scumbag could have killed our son. Luke's gonna be fine. Yeah, I know. It was just the thought of what could have happened. Don't. No, I never want to be away from Luke again, you know, never. It won't happen, I promise. But we're gonna be away from here soon. Yeah, if anyone wants to move in with him around here. No, this is all his fault. I mean, he sells the stuff. He ruins lives, destroys families, kills kids for his own greed. It's not his fault, it was Ali. He brought the stuff into the house. He preys on people like Ali, that's why it's his fault. We're going soon, try and forget him. Forget him? I could kill him. you a question and you were going to say yes take what you want take what you want look you can have my house i didn't say anything honest honest ah. i said i'm going to ask you a question and you're going to say yes ah. and the question is dad can i marry your daughter you idiot you know damn well he's been ill it was just a joke oh brilliant joke it could have set him off again. Thrown in the back of a car with heavies with a gun. I thought you said you were going to Liverpool to ask. I thought you'd see the funny side. I'm sorry. And hang on, marriage. What's all that about? You're already married. I was. Look, Jimmy, I just want your blessing. It's important. I'll sleep on it. Fair enough. Here we go. Oh. Should fit you from the club. Thanks, love. Hey, good that. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Yeah. How's it going? Yeah, it's brilliant. Ow. What's the matter? <laughs> That's nothing. Come on, let's have a look. I'm all right, I'm all right. What is, what is it? It's nothing. I just had a bit of a run-in with a neighbour. He hit you? Just leave it, will you, Lindsay? Oh, I want to know what happened. <sighs> There's something you should know. I... I had a bit of a scare. I've been seeing a consultant. What? Well, I'm fine now. I just... Well, I thought I had lung cancer at first. Cancer? It's all right. Don't be panicking. I'm clear. I've just got a bit of a problem with the lining on my lung. Well, what's the problem? What's happening? <sighs> it was years ago. Something to do with lag and asbestos and all that. I mean, the doc says it could be 15 years before it goes bad. I mean, if that... I wish you'd have told me. <laughs> well, I wish you'd told me you were marrying Barry Grant. So is it OK now? Yeah, it's fine. I've told you, stop worrying. Never mind about me. Do you love him? <laughs> I like him. 
we get on yet? We have a good time? And? Is that enough? Dad, it's not just about love. It's about stability. It's like you've always said, life's a game. You get dealt a bum deal and you just make the most of it. And you're making a commitment, love? The man's a gangster? I've only ever wanted three things in my life. To bring Kylie up well, to sing, and to have a club. And I've got all of that. Plus, the financial security of this. And I love him. So, what do you think? Hey, I want your blessing as well. Well, I'm determined to enjoy the rest of my life, so... If it makes you happy, yeah, go on. So it's not even nine o'clock yet and he's got people calling. What are you going to do all day? Watch him. No, sir. I'm going to go and see our Christy. Have you phoned yet? It's just the same. Oh, I hope he's going to be all right. Still can't get in touch with our Steve. Did he say when he's going to come back? No. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Doctor's given him the old clue so we can go and collect him. Yeah, well, let's just get Luke on first and then stop worrying about social workers and everything else, eh? It won't be as bad as you think. Don't know what we'd have done if we'd lost him. Do you think we can go and have a look at some of these this afternoon? Let's just get Luke back home, eh? I'm desperate to get him away from here. I'm not having a drug baron like him push us out of our own home. Our home? How can you call this our home? It is? You bought it with Diane. I only inherited it. It's just a house. Oh, come on. This is the place where your daughter got pregnant. The house where Tony lay awake at night worrying about Imelda. It's the place where the police dug up the back garden. The house where Diane left to get killed. And it's the place that got invaded by druggies with guns. And it's the house where Michelson forced his way into to get at me. How can you call it a home? It's not anymore. You can't live a normal life if you spent all your time watching your neighbour. I'm going to go for a bath. Please think about it. Dad, Barry and I want you to come and live with us. Have the same security. Nabea? Well, if you want. But there is a smaller house in the woods. You wouldn't have to pay rent. You'd have your own space. You could help out with the regular gardener. And I guarantee it'd be a life, not an existence. So you do listen to me whittling down the phone, do you? Yeah. Of course I listen. So what do you think? Well, I've got things to do back on the close. You don't have to worry about that. I'll help you out. We want you up here with us. Just say yes, Dad. I mean, you don't have to make your mind up now. Have a little look around, see what you think. Yeah? Come on, son. Same again, Lukey. See you soon. Ignore him. I heard he wasn't too well. Yeah, no thanks, I'd like to see you. Just leave him. Lukey, go inside. What did you fucking say? Don't pretend you didn't hear. The lad's had some acid, then he swallowed a tab. A tab that probably came from you. Prove it. Just leave it, Sean. I don't need proof. I know. You could have killed a kid. I mean, we might have done before, for all I know. You definitely will in the future. Don't fucking lecture me, smart ass. Okay? I sell stuff. But I don't tell people what to do with it. You sell drugs to kids. I don't care. They don't have to buy it. Or leave it lying around. Accidents happen. That you sleep at night, is it? That you justify selling poison to kids? Don't tempt me. You've got five seconds to get in there, or I'll kick your fucking lights out. Sean, sure, just get inside. I mean it, lad. Come on, then. No! You might stop me now, but I'll come back, and I'll keep coming back. I'm not some little squirt in a Father Christmas suit. You're gonna have to kill me to stop me! Might just have to arrange that, eh? Forget about an act scumbag. We had the fucking cheek to ask after my son and try and justify selling drugs to kids. You should have let me ring our John and Denny. No. Well, he needs sorting, doesn't he? We're going soon. We're selling up and moving on. But don't you think that he needs sorting? It's impossible. But if I ring our John and Denny, it's not. 
Look, I will be able to settle till he gets what's coming to him. And I said to you, I don't want no secrets, so just let me ring him. Drugs nearly got your alley, Kirsty and Lizzie killed. He got your dad killed. Don't you think it's time to start fighting back, eh? I've got to get some shopping in. Right. You heard from our Steve yet? No. As far as I know, he's still in Wales. Can't get older Tim either. Must be a good job they're on. Hello? Yes, speaking. Why, what's happened? Well, how is he? Is it our Steve? You what? Well, is he going to be all right? Yeah, all right, yeah. We're, we're on our way. Uh, where do we go? A and E. OK. What's happened? It's our Tony. The, uh, they think he might have taken some kind of overdose. And what about our Wills? Wills can come and stop here every other weekend and after school holidays. Uh, are you having a laugh? You think Jackie's going to agree to that? Jimmy, read my lips. It's all sorted out. Oh, what? Been threatening her, have you? She wants you to settle down just as much as Lindsay does. She's got her own life to lead as well, you know. I'm not having you threatening her. Look, my future is Will's future and all, you know. And she appreciates that. Yeah, and you threaten her and I could lose out on seeing him. It's bad enough me having bipolar, never mind anything else. Jackie could see the sense in what I was saying. Oh, she saw the sense, did she? Oh, well, I wish I'd known it was that easy. I'd have asked you for marriage guidance, counselling, 30 years ago. You haven't got anything to worry about. Lindsay will come back with you and I'll close down things at home. She was telling me about your neighbour from hell. About your bruises and that. What's going on, Jimmy? That's between me and him. Look, why don't you tell me? I'm family now. Well, almost. Did you sleep on it? Oh, the gun to the head question. Well? Got it all, haven't you? I made sure of that. Go out and take what you want. In a couple of generations, this will all be legit. Carly and Wills will live a different way to us, if that's what you want. So when's the wedding? Lindsay will decide that. Right. You're going back to Savvy, aren't you? I think I just might tag along. What for, like? Old time's sake. Do you think you're doing? What the hell's going on? Shouldn't leave things lying around, mate. Accidents happen. Don't take the piss out of me. Well, you should have watched where you were going then, shouldn't you? You what? It's only a car, mate. Not a kid. Stop it! I want him. I'll kill him! Go on. Fuck off and let the girl protect you. And your son's in there. You're gonna let him see you like this? Now get in the van and get to work. No! Yes! And you think this is it, do you? You keep him in check, love. If he comes near me again, he'll end up an Aussie. You'll fucking pay for this. He's not going anywhere, and neither am I. He needs doing, doing good style. Are you gonna let him rule our lives after what he's done? Our Luke and now Tony Murray in hospital. Let me ring our kid. Chicken shit. So, is it going to be all right? I can't get anything useful out of them. What happened? They found him in the park with Susie Michelson. They'd both taken crack cocaine. Crack? Susie's just down the corridor. Oh, God. Three guesses where it came from. Look, I've told you, stop worrying, I'll sort it. Don't be soft. We want to up here as soon as possible. And what about our Carney? Who's going to look after her? That girl you saw before. That was a nanny help. Well, just drop us at the station. Give us a few quid and I'll be all right. Dad, Barry drove you up here. I'll drive you back. Now, you stop worrying. Right, are you ready? You're coming. Yeah, and I'll drive. Look, I've told you there's no need for you to go back there. And I've told you. 
It's for old times' sake. Good would it do, and I could lose another son, and if I didn't have you, please, no revenge. You lads ever seen a video nasty? Hang on, Tommy, we try. Scared, eh? So. Yeah. What are you doing? Barry, what are you doing? You could at least help. Looks like you've got it all under control. Good job I have. The old house is up for sale. I was thinking of going and having a look. Well, don't go buy any, for old times' sake. Got it. Look what I found, Dad. <laughs> oh, good old Mr Stripes. Yeah, Kylie left him to look after my dad when we were in Newcastle. Look how we got to move on. This is taking ages. What can I do? He's so disorganised. <laughs> Look who it is, eh? Still as flash as ever, I see. What are you up to nowadays? You still skivvying for Jackie Decker, are you? My stepdaughter, you mean? My dad said she'd married Ron. You and Ron? <sighs> Never did have any manners. Do you know what? When I cleaned in Laluth, he always left that office a pigsty. Do you want a coffee, Beth? No, oh, thanks. I just thought I'd pop round, see how you are. Eh? Hey, you want to hear what's happened to Tony Murray? And it's all down to Michelson. <laughs> Why did we just get a dentist that was closer to here, eh? It's a better sky when he's miles away. Can I help you? Just looking at the house. And what did Michaelson send you over or something? Name's Barry Grant. He used to live here. Why? You know Jimmy? I'm minding his daughter. It's Jimmy's favourite Sony then. One he doesn't have to make himself. <laughs> yeah, that's Jimmy. Sorry about that. All right, mate. So why don't you tell me about this Michaelson fella, eh? Why didn't you tell me and Barry the truth? Look, I fight my own battles. It's not just Jimmy, you know. He hit Ron and he put Christy Murray in hospital. I don't believe it. My dad getting beaten up in his own street. Well, what's a dealer do moving into the close anyway? You're doing the right thing, moving to Newcastle. We're getting out as well, you know. But how long before our Josh is offered drugs or he finds some lying around on the street? How long before there's a shooting? This place is finished. Uh, it's not. Tony Murray, in a coma after taking crack, and Ruth's little lad had LSD. It's all down to him, you know. There's nothing we can do except leave. Listen, no one would have to go if we can just get rid of Michelson. What would you do if your kid had taken drugs up by him? He wouldn't be living there or anywhere else. What are you looking at? I said, what are you fucking looking at? What's so funny? You, uh... Going on, we could have had you out of here weeks ago. It was my business. Dad, we could have done something about it. Marty Murray and his brother tried. Look what happened to him. Yeah, to Barry is about this. Hey. Looks like Mr. Stipes hasn't been doing his job properly, Jimmy. I've just been hearing about Michelson. You've heard? From the kid over the road in our old house. Did he tell you about the lad next door? Taking crack cocaine off Michelson's daughter. He's still in a coma. Yeah, I don't know. I hope he's gonna be okay. 
Eh, it's about time you went, Bev, I think. Uh, but I want to know what you're going to do. Nice seeing you as well. So are you going to give me your version, Jimmy? Jimmy, are you going to tell me? Tell him, Dad. I've told her. I fight my own battles. Jimmy. Ah, oh, Tony taking crack. Are you sure to come from Michaelson's? Her dad belted her so she pinched some of his stuff out of spite or something. What does rubbish like him do and live next door to us? I bet he's one of those ones that deal it round the schools. Yeah, well, if I had my way, him and everybody like me be bumped off by the MI5 or somebody. So what are we waiting for? Look, he screwed up last time. You won't do it if I'm with you. Hiya. Hiya. Why have you left him? They're doing some tests. I thought I'd get away for a bit. How is he? He's gonna be fine. A nurse told me Susie's going home, so her mum's tomorrow. Well, when will he wake up? They can't say. We just have to hope and pray. How's Christy doing? They've got to operate. Operate? One of his kidneys is badly torn. They've got to try and repair it. Oh, my God, he's destroying our family. Let's just do it and put him in hospital now. Come on. No. He deserves it. I don't want any more of this kind of talk. It's not going to be talk. I just want to move. Not and let him win. I've had enough of this off your dad. But he's right, love. It's giving in to him. It's just letting him do what he wants. He's done enough damage to us. We can't fight him anymore. We're going. Look, I'm going to get off. I'll see you later. What song were you like? I had a bit of an accident with the limo. It rolled back on me in a country lane in Wales. At the air, the bumper caught him. Yeah, he had to go to Aussie down there as well. Listen, I'm going to go to the loo, and then we can sort later. I don't want to leave Tony on his own for too long. Let's do him again this afternoon. You were for it. No. No going around there on the bounce this time, right? We think about it. No mistakes. Listen, if he's keeping the gear in the house... Well, he must be mad. I could bubble him to the busies, right? We'd go in there, they'd find all sorts of stuff. And you'd end up with a hole in the back of your head. Oh. What's going on? My dad's coming to live with us in Newcastle. Us? Me and Barry. Barry Grant. I've heard about you. Heard about you as well. Yeah, well, now we all know each other. I've got a few phone calls to make. Listen, Tim, um, I'm selling up. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Me and Steve are getting a place of our own anyway. Do you think hey, you could sell the furniture for us and I'll sort out the estate agents and all that? Yep. Me and Steve are used to doing skanky house clearances. <laughs> oh, clock. Thanks. Have you said about Tony money? That's one of the reasons I want my dad out of here. Yeah, well, that fella needs sopping if you ask me. What's up? Had an accident with the limo. You've not wrecked it, have you? No, just me leg. <laughs> you drink? Yeah, go on. I'll have a herbal tea, please, oh, Ken. Come on, Dad. Tea later. We've got loads to do. Come on, come and show me what clothes and stuff you want to take. Oh, it's all rush, rush, rush yeah, with you. Of course it is. The sooner we get there, the sooner you'll be in your new place. What if Michaelson wasn't here? He's beaten and bullied his way into dominating the whole close. He's here to stay. But what if he wasn't? I don't want to know about Michaelson. I'm sick of him. I just want to go. But that's given into. I've heard all that and I'm sick of that as well. Nicky's going, Ron and Bev Dixon are going, the Gordons. If we stay, how do we know that we're not going to get somebody as bad as him next door moving in? Isn't that a bit far-fetched? You never know. Our Tony could have died. And if we stay here, how do we know that he's not going to get lured into drugs again? If he so much as thinks of touching any drugs. If it's flooding the place, there's nothing that we can do about it. And if that's not Michaelson's intention, then why is he here? How do I know that we're not going to have to go through the same thing that we went through last year? Guns, violence, armed police. I mean, he's the kind of person that, that attracts that kind of thing, and I dread it. I just want to go. OK. I'll make the call. Thank you. It's wrong, though, isn't it? Why can't we get help? Why should someone like that be allowed to destroy other people's lives? Have you heard the story of the stranger's field? In the old days, if a stranger came to the village and his face didn't fit, and he upset people. 
They'd kill him. They'd take him out to a field and they'd kill him and they'd bury him. And everyone had a hand in it. If they clubbed him to death, everyone had used the club. And if they used a knife, everyone had stabbed him. And that's what used to happen all over the country. And nobody ever breathed a word of it. So why tell me this? Well, after everything that's happened around here, I thought you might like to know. Changed my mind. Hey? All this Newcastle stuff. Barry abducted me. It's all too fast. I was getting married. No. You go ahead with that if that's what you want. And if it lasts, it lasts. And if it doesn't, you'll get a big payoff, won't you? I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. And running away. I can't do it. What? Everyone's running away. And it's all down to that piece of muck, Michelson. You got Bev and Ron. Marty and Jan, the Gordons, and now me. I can't do it. I'm not doing it. You think you're best off out of it? No. Dad, he's attacked you. He's attacked just about everyone else. Why didn't you just leave it? No. OK, you've offered me a new way of life. Barry's being generous, very generous, but that's not the point. I'm talking about principle love. I bought your mother out of this house. It took some doing, but it was worth it. This is my home. It's our Wills' home, right? And I am not having him forcing me to go. Did you forget him? No. I'm sticking it out. I was here first. And so were my neighbours. Why should he control us like that, eh? I've ended up to here with that incinerator fella steamroller in me. And Michelson is not doing the same. I don't go till he's out of here. Will you get real, Dad? What are you going to do about him? I can petition the council, can't I? I can go to the papers. I'll get one of those anti-social orders on him. I'll do something. I stopped that flaming road, didn't I? Look, we've offered you a new life. Why don't you just take it? Well, I am back now. And I can see what he's doing to this neighbourhood. If I ran off to me new life, I wouldn't enjoy it. It'd be hollow. Me knowing that I hadn't forced him out before I left. Are you sure? It's definitely happened. All right, I'll be in touch as soon as I can. My dad's changed his mind. You what? Didn't want to leave the close until Michelson had gone. Said he wants an anti-social order against him. I'm great. Yeah, well, I've got to do something. I'll go and have a private chat with your dad. I need a word outside. Well? Come on, you've seen him, you've met him. You can see what I'm up against. I can't help you. I've got something to do and it's important. Yeah, well, this is important. And what our Lindsay wants and all, that's important. And I can't leave here until Michaelson goes. You breathe away to this. I won't. This morning, two of the fellas that killed our Damon were released from jail. They got life. They did 15 years, but I swore from day one that when they got out, they'd pay for what they did to our Damon with their lives, and that's going to happen now. Are you off your head? Jimmy, don't you remember what happened to your son when he died in your house, in your arms? Wouldn't you want to kill them? I wish I had the bottle to sort, Michelson. We'll find it. I can't. Can't you help us out? Listen, them fellas, they've been banged up for years. A few more days isn't going to make any difference, is it? I've got to make a move. Just think about what that drug dealing scum did to your Jimmy. I talked to Tim. I told him a story. You need to hear it and get your life fixed.
Who else is going to get worked over by him before we do anything, eh? And how do you know your Tony won't be coming out? And him next door will be giving him drugs just to get him up. He needs doing now, Steve. He does finally agreed. We're selling up. Well, there's no need to. We've decided. Why don't you just wait for a bit and see what happens? Wait until you've made a mess of trying to beat him up again, you mean? I don't want that, Steve. I'm going back to the hospital. Why don't we just wait until we get organised? Have you heard the story of the stranger's field? I've got to go. Where? And how long for? I don't know. Look, I'll send the car and I'll meet you at the hotel later. We're supposed to be moving me dad. Tough. Well, maybe I should think again about getting married. Oh, don't be soft. She's got a point. No secrets. Trust. Isn't that the basis of a good marriage? We're not married yet. Well, maybe it's just as well you know. Stay out of this, Jimmy. No, I won't stay out of it. Because I'm right in the middle of it. It wasn't my idea to get bundled in the back of a car, driven up to the northeast, breaking it, thinking I was going to die. You said my blessing was important. Yeah, well, maybe I should take it back. Don't do that. Listen, we both know about your way of life. Barry, what if it all goes wrong? What's going to happen to our Carly in private school? Hey, hey, get married, my new future. It's just something I've got to do. And I've got to do it now. Why didn't you tell me? Look, maybe when we're married, Things will be different, eh? But hard. What do you want? An autograph? A photograph? You're looking at me again. So? Who are you? What's your game? I said, what are you looking at? History. Do you know what he was doing? Love, I've no need to know. And you'd have a quiet life if you didn't know. I saw the way he was. I just know he's up to something. Something Love. that's just... Well, that's something in our lives that we don't want other people to know about. I suppose so. I suppose so. Remember your last wedding day? Yeah. Yeah. And holding a gun to Carrie's head over custody of Carrie. Well, Barry's told me he wants to leave all this kind of stuff behind. He's just hanging on to his empire until the day he can get out. Do you think he'll ever do what he says and pack it all in? Can't you just hang on in there until it happens? I want to, but I just get so scared every time he goes off somewhere. Don't marry him, then. I mean it. I want to. You sure? Yeah. Love, I want that new life. A life compared to an existence, you know. Winning the big game instead of losing. But I'd let it go this minute if I thought you didn't want to marry him. The thing is, love, I think you and him can't work it out. I think it's there between you, isn't it? But if it doesn't work, you know, if stuff like today or anything else makes you want to go or leave him, then I'll be there for you. Thanks, Dad. Barry can sort it out, you know. We could be in Newcastle tonight. No. Dad, I know it sounds hypocritical after everything I've just been saying and... Barry knows people. You could get Michelson out of here. No. Dad, please. No. But the minute he's gone, I'll be up there. My new life. The game winner. I promise you. But he is not driving me out. OK? Hiya. Listen, uh, how's your brother and Tony? Our Tony's all right. Christy's lost a kidney. Oh, I know. They operated, but it was too late. He got an infection. I'm sorry. He's going to be all right. It's just it shouldn't have happened. Look at him. 
He's made me brother. He's almost killed me son. I hate him. I wish I could kill him. I don't know if feel exactly the same. It's all right, just gone to her mother's. What? Just had the call. You for it? Dad! What if it goes wrong? It won't go wrong. But what if it does? It won't. There's nothing that's okay. What's he doing? Time, Dad. Dad, just think of everything he's done. Heart Tony. Christy losing a kidney. Shop. I said, have you got a ground sheet? This is too camp. I said, have you got a ground sheet? <laughs> I hope you all died peacefully in your sleep like my granddad did. Oh, like his six passengers who died screaming. <laughs> Answer me. 
I don't care what you told the police, did you? I could told them. I wasn't even there. I was out with our Denny and John, and they'll confirm that. As will Nick, Stuart, Rick, Mal, Vanessa, and Sue. Oh, and uh, Paul and Davey were there too. In on it, you mean? No one's in on anything. I've got my witnesses, and that is all they need. When you get to toss about some low-life piece of garbage, it not only sells drugs to kids, but leaves enough lying round to nearly kill the money lad and his own daughter. Tell me, eh? Who gives a toss? I don't! No, I hope he suffered. I hope he dangled at the end of that rope with his feet kicking around while the life went out of him and thought about all the misery and suffering he and the likes of him had caused. He was still a person, Jimmy. Yeah, he was. Once, Nick, I've been there. As Granty reminded me, I've bloody been there. Once you get involved, once you... Right. ...of the drugs become a drug. The buzz, the money, the lifestyle. The paranoia about it all. I know the likes of him. Even our Lindsay nearly got dragged into it. But Mick Jono's daughter, Gemma, OD'd in her club. All right, Jimmy, I don't need the lecture. I've been there myself, remember? But no one should just, just string somebody else up. How can you be so casual about it? He got what was coming to him. And I've told you anyway, it's got nothing to do with me. Are you sure? This is the guy who was daft enough to get a truckload of concrete poured all over him, remember? It's funny how no one on the close saw or heard anything. Even the ones who said they were out at the time that it happened. I mean, you would have thought someone would have noticed coming home if the cops were right about what time it happened. I mean, if you're coming home round the corner, you're going to be looking straight at his house, wouldn't you? It'd be a bit difficult not to see a dead body hanging from the window, don't you think? Yeah. If, if you, I, or someone came home that way. But if you, I, or someone came from the pathway, then you, I, or someone would have the back to it, wouldn't they? Just like I told the busies. Just like I told the busies. Every time they asked me. That's all they need. Where that was, and who I was with. If I got one thing out of all that business with Anatoni, it's how the police think. Which is why you nearly got arrested for something that you didn't do. They don't give up that easily, Marty. You should have also learnt that. That's when they thought I was a paedophile. And it's going to be the same with him. He's just a... no. He was just a drug dealer. One less to worry about. And one very easily ticked off as a victim of gang war. I don't think anybody's going to be losing much sleep about him. Except his 14-year-old daughter, our Tony's friend. Sir, I feel sorry for. What? That... That girl that introduced our Tony to all sorts of drugs? If it hadn't have been her, it would have been somebody else. It didn't start drinking and smoking because she moved in next door, or her father. It was actually long before that. And we won't be the first parents that have to face up to the fact that their kids have got problems that we didn't even notice. Thanks for that. Bye now. Oh, how many times do they need to tell her? Ah, they're going to keep coming back trying to prick our conscience, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, as if we're going to care about some drug dealer's daughter. Do you think it's a bit funny, though, you know, like nobody on the close knowing anything? Look, it was some drug dealer scum, right? It was bumped off by some other no-mark scum, probably over a dodgy drugs deal. Good riddance. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I won't be beeping over them, but... I've got to admit, you know, it does seem a bit odd that nobody saw or heard anything. Even Corkill and that Sean Oh, well, you didn't hear anything, did you? You were too busy raising the roof with your snoring. And I was the mood, no? Ah, oh, you were. It was me trying to get you upstairs for half an hour. I just wanted to finish watching that thingy. And you never heard anything? Oh, God, Ron, you're as bad as the coppers. I was watching the telly, right? It was loud. I was watching the telly. OK, I wasn't doing my duty as my husband's sex slave. I'll admit. You didn't tell the cop of that. No, I didn't. But I won't be doing it again or anything okay. if you don't shut up. OK, but it's not every day that your next-door neighbour gets hung out of the bedroom window, is it? A window, if you recall, used to be our bedroom. We got into some shenanigans there, didn't we? <laughs> 
true. I, but if I've learned anything over our past shenanigans, is that life goes on. So we better get this stuff packed, eh? Before the removal men get it. Now, where is that rope you got? It's uh, in the Moby. Well, don't just stand there. Estate agent about the keys. Yeah, at any time after 12 o'clock. Kirsty's gonna go and pick the keys up on the way over. Wouldn't it have been easier to just go to the chippy or something? Not tonight when everyone's knackered. Right, just make sure you're there at least the same time as the removal guys. Everything's labelled and colour coded. Colour coded and marked up for each room. Anal or what? Please and I'd for it. See you later. You off now, then? Yeah, well, can't send me to be sorry to see the back of this place. Yeah, it hasn't exactly been the best of years for you, has it? Certainly wasn't how we planned it. No, not for any of us, really. I mean, I thought it was all going to be a fresh start for us, but you can't plan for dickheads getting in the way, can you? Tell me about it. Look, Steve, I'm really sorry about last time. Don't be daft. I had a few hang-ups myself, didn't I? So, fresh start, then, eh? Yeah, well, actually, just Ruth and Sean refereeing between Ellie and Stuart, but... You'd always move out, get your own place. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, me and Tim are set up on the Bankrest Business Park with, uh, with someone we met. Kirsty? Mm -hmm. Right, well, um, our best. Yeah. Hey, um, maybe, you know, away from here, perhaps we could... You've got my number, yeah? Move on, kiddo. Move on. She's history, mate. Our future's elsewhere. And Tanya. Yeah. <laughs> and all the police have got is a bit of old skanky blue rope, eh? Look, where do you at? Ali, is that all you can manage? Leave him. It's an emotional moment moving out with soft toy. It's Luke's soft get. No, it's Luke's soft toy. Yeah, and you're the soft get. <laughs> Language. Look, we'll be all right once we leave this place. So will I come to think of it? As long as I don't have to share room with him, yeah? Deal's a deal. Yes. Well, how long will I have to carry on living with him for? He just... Oh. What? Well, hands it off. Who doesn't at the moment? Am I that bad? Well, you've been with us. Well, we all have, haven't we? Hey, his ex didn't take long to sell that place, did she? That's if it was her and not the police. They can confiscate drug dealers' properties now, you know. I'll bet it was his ex, though. Far more vindictive than that. Well, at least she had reason to. Did you ever hear what happened to that young girl? Nope. Not interested, either. All I'm interested in is leaving this place and getting on with that life. Give us it back. It's mine. I took it. Yeah, you didn't know how until I showed you. I did it. It's mine. Hey, hang on. We're moving in a minute. What can you two possibly be arguing over here? It's I in. Can... Oh. Ali, where are you going? Some hoes. Ruth, Sean, make him give us it back. But we're moving house. Well, just give us a bell. I'll find you. Look, if he's not there, he can't shotgun any of the rooms, can he? Hey, yeah, I'll text him the wrong address. I just don't believe it. Yes, you do. You were just opening any change, weren't you? Look, take it as a sign of stability. Life goes on. Stu, I thought it was that rope over the top, will you, mate? What's up, kid? Oh. Hey, come on. This is the fellow who had his hands on, have you? Don't. OK, then, the fellow who thought your mother would... Sorry. I'm a bit wound up, too, you know. Yeah, well, he says I'm wound up. This is the fella. I don't know. It's just all this. I don't know. Yeah, all right, all right, it's OK. It's the fella who was like a dad to you, eh? Let it go, kid. Come on, let it go. I can't do it, I can't. I want to, but I just can't. I just... I don't know, I just don't know. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I just, I feel so... So... Lost? Yeah, and angry. I spent half my life running around trying to help people, bending myself this way and that way, and people, they just... I 
I left here years ago, shouldn't I? After my mum, my dad and Jason. Well, Mum's gonna never find answers to questions like that. Like, why'd you get involved with me? I know why that happened. My head was done in. <laughs> because mine was. Another hopeless case for you to take on. Is that what you really think? No. And all I can say as a stand-in dad is... We all react to what happens to us. None of us are really in control of our lives, love. Whether you believe in God or... conspiracy stories... or fairy tales, even. There's always someone or something else pulling the strings. And we all react as best we can. You know, to it all. At the time, with what we know then. And you... and everything that's happened in your life, you've done brilliantly. And I'll tell you something. I'd be proud to call you my real daughter. Look, are you OK or are you starting all over? Let's just say we're starting afresh, yeah? Is Mr. Corkillan? Jim! Hi, Stu. Hiya. Um, we're getting off now, but I just wanted to give you these. They're the originals and I've wiped our machine. What are they? We'll, we'll see. And uh, thanks for letting me help out with the gardening and that. Right, last step, boss. Hey, no problems. Good to have you on board. All right, well, uh, I'll get off then. Nice one, OK. See you, Kenny. You take care of yourself, eh? Yeah. See you. Yes. See you later, Jim. Could be anything and everything, you know, stag nights and nights, wedding dues, anniversaries, just see how it goes. So where did all this money suddenly come from? Uh, we just had a bit of unfinished business, sorted itself out. Got paid up from that and well... So she's not married this Tanya then? How do you know? She called before, told me to tell you the flat's already. All right. So where is this flat? Down Beetham Plaza. Well, you haven't done too bad out of this in a co -op, really, have you? Considering. Well, considering we live next door to a crack then. <sighs> Hey, did you have any idea that our Tony was up to all kind? Well, do us a favour. If I had had taken care of that fella long be well, before he got what was coming to him... No, I didn't mean that anyway. I meant smoking like it used to mean, you know, tobacco, not that other stuff. You know, I can't count the amount of kids I've found smoking in the school toilets or behind the bike shed. You'd think I'd be able to spot it my own son, wouldn't you? Ah, oh, well, you're not the first, Dad. And if you'd ask me, I'd hang all them fellas that run tobacco companies onto next door's window and all. <laughs> right. Anyway, that's me. What time he's gone tomorrow? Two o'clock, if all goes to plan. Right, I'll see you then. We are doing the right thing, aren't we? Moving. We haven't got much choice, have we, Marty? We're still undusted. Well, that's it. The end of an era for the Dixons family. Yeah, but the start of a new one, eh, Josh? If you say so. I do. Fresh start, fresh life. Are you sure we should have sent my down with them removal fellas? Eh, you want to be grateful I'm letting you take it with you? It was up to me. I'd have set the blaming thing on fire. Uh, that's something your mother does when she leaves the house, if I remember correctly. Just off then, eh, kids? Yeah, I was just wondering whether or not to torch the place, <clears> you know. That'd be one of the eye for that cynical lot, wouldn't it? Well, they'll probably knock the place down, won't they? Make way for that road they've always wanted. Anyway, here you go. Got your little going away, Prezi. What's this? They're the originals for, uh, well, you know, for, uh, for them. And, uh, I don't remember that. Hey, nose, give that here. Did you have to? Is that your real body? <laughs> cool. Yeah, well, I was once. They're not your real bodies, though, are they? Not anymore, son. There's even more of them to love now. Listen, I wasn't trying to be funny or anything. You know, but they are the originals, and they're the only copies you've got. Yeah, well, anyway. Thanks for that. OK. Oh, and look, Jim, I know that we haven't exactly seen eye to eye over the years, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I hope I never see you again. Come on, Josh. How'd you end up with that? How did we end up over a pool table? Another moment of madness, eh? Mm, I've had a few of them in my time, as Ron just reminded me. Like, um, when I set that place on fire with the entire family inside. Yeah, well, talk about burning your bridges, eh? Mm. Only all our past could go up and smoke, eh? Oh, well. See you, Jim. See you.
bag with Blaze. It's a primeval thing. Sound like getting shag up here for a few beers. No, more like looking after Kith and Ken. Half and home. Like wanting natural justice to take its toll. No, you lost me there, mate. I could string someone up with that. Yeah, so I heard. So it's all this, then? Bridges, as in burning. You're giving in, then? No, mate, I'm growing up, I think. Paul Lindsay's made me a boss offer that I'd be as mad as everyone round here thinks I am not to take. See, I never thought that, Jim. A bit barking, maybe, but, uh, not mad, mate. When they're gonna do you, you know it's coming, you just don't know when. <laughs> Tip top. You know what? There are two ways you can live your life. In the past and in the future. Now, what's already gone on we can't do much about. But what's going to happen in the future? That's down to us. It's a bit like the half-filled glass thing. Is it half full or half empty? You just said it's half filled. Exactly. Because I've been miserable and I've been happy. Mm -hmm. And I know which I'd rather be. So let's just get on with the rest of our lives, OK? Right, we're all done. It's all in now. Except for those half-empty tins of paint you nicked from the school. I never robbed them. They were going on a skip, and anyway, <laughs> they're not half-empty, are they? Nope, they're half-full. Is everyone round here a philosopher? <laughs> well, we can always just throw them on Jimmy's bonnie. Well, they're cynical, have them? They've got an incinerator, haven't they? They could burn them. Oh. Come on, let's get gone. <laughs> you know, it'd be hard to know where we're going, exactly. Follow me. We're not telling anyone where we're going, so no one can tell anyone else. I'll be there for you. Boy. Now. Get dirty, little. Get off me. Ah. What's this then, Jim? Some kind of Viking funeral thing, is it? Yeah, sort of. Sending all my memories off to Van Halle. Good band, then. <laughs> you off, then? Yeah. Feels a bit off, though, doesn't it? Well, it's bound to, isn't it? It's been years. But Seneca, we don't waste any time, do we? Oh, nah. He told me they like to get in fast, stop the rippers. Oh, you know, them people who break in and rip out all the plumbing and the fittings and that. Always happens when they're doing up schools, but then, well, that's usually the teachers. Now, if they break in there, all they'll find is a couple of aisle tins of paint. I was thinking of leaving some taps running, you know, just like the kids do on the last day of term. Nothing worse than a soggy, wet building. So, where are you off to, then? Well, I haven't even told Christy that. New house, new life, new start. No one knowing where we are. So, you're going to have to shoot your Christy when you get there, then, won't you? I don't think it hasn't crossed me mind. So, you're going to be last man standing, then, eh, Jim? As always. That's no best. And remember what I told you about your lad. Keep your arms around him. He only wants to be loved. Molly Codley. You're gonna get one chance. You coming in, Dad? <laughs> he only wants to be loved. 
quite wrong. Oh, there we go. Not again. Shut it, Tim Bell. Yes, Mom. So come on, what's the plan? Well, Lindsay and Vaza want to take me up to Newcastle when they go, but um, I think I want to finish things off here, you know what I mean? Well, what were they doing here anyway? Well, Flash Harry had something to sort out, didn't he? I know, I can imagine. No, love, on this occasion, I don't think he can. I guess what? For once, I don't want to know. Well, hang on, yeah, my flight's off till 8 o'clock. Oh, you're going to the airport? Well, it's usually where you get planes from. No, I meant if you are. I've got a job on over there. I can pick up the limo and drop you off. In that thing? Hey, let your brother-in-law do a favour for once. I might never see it again. You all right, love? Yeah, I just... I never really thought of it like that. Hey, you're going to go to Brussels. You're going to settle down. And you're going to use that brain that me and Em always wanted you to. <laughs> They're proud of you, you know. And so am I. My sister-in-law being a university spod. Don't think I'm the too. <laughs> I am not. Look, I know you've always thought of me as a bit of a no mark like, but I always tried to do my best for you, you know. I really loved her. I know you did. And look, I was wondering if... What? You like that. I mean, I understand if you don't like it, it's just... Well, she's near. And I've got other bits and pieces. Oh, and... Tim. Take that as a yes, then. Yeah, I'm sorry I've been doing that all day. Hey, no problem. Oh, except. What? You know, Emily. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, um. Look, it was nice. Oh. Look, if I never say this now, I never will. I was also so proud to have a sister in law. It was. You are going to blow this moment. I'm sorry, but it's still a yes to the lift later on. Yeah, of course. I'll always drop Jimmy off at the station first. Hey, whatever the lady wants, I'm going to get off. Hey, Tim Bell. See, we're on Truth Games. Might not have liked you, like, but, eh, uh, you're of always fancies. What? Oh, yeah. What? With steak? <laughs> Still away from it? No. So, this is it. Done all teas and hugs and stuff. <laughs> like I said before, thanks for everything you've done for him. Gonna stay in touch? I hope so. Right, are you ready? I wanna get off and see what Barry's up to. What are you doing? Feeling me past. Seems to have all been in here. Oh, Jerry. Hey, yes, son. Down the hatch. Oh, Billy. Hey. <laughs> this is crazy. Your button. <sighs> Big cheese. What do you think, Mum? Oh, Kitty, you look stunning. I don't know if I've ever said this to you direct. We haven't often some daft things. <laughs> haven't we just? Like, uh, where is my future son-in-law? Hey, don't start. You know why I'm doing that. And don't try and stop me getting all soppy on you. Go on. Well, you've... We've certainly made some mistakes over the years, haven't we? <laughs> hey? Been slagged off by some right-no marks who were only interested in the sound of their own voice. <laughs> They haven't made the marks we have. We'll remember them, eh? <laughs> and no matter what, we're family. Real family. And no matter what we've done, you're my dad. And I love you. Hey, soft. <laughs> <laughs> right, this might be the receptacle of all my memories, but it's also the prison of my future. So, as one door closes, another opens. Time to look forward, not back. All that business, yeah? Right, that's all I need from here. My lovely cracker. And this. 
What is that? Hard disk off my computer. Got all my little secret diaries on there. Yeah. I'm binning off my old computer. You and Mr Moneybags can set me up with a new one. With broadband. Thank you very much, seeing as we can't get it round here. Hee <laughs> hee. Hey, Jim. Sling it on, Ken. Biggest symbol of my past, that. How many cups of tea have been made with that? And every one of them tells a flaming different story. <laughs> Dad, are you OK? Yeah, I'm coming to see our wills anyway. Everything OK? Yeah, fine. He's just going off on one, you know. It's only a myth about burning your past and going to that hell, you know. It can't go back to being as simple as an eye for an eye. Oh, well, I'll try to tell enough the politicos. Do you know what? They have lost touch with the real people who live in the real houses. Do you know, I can remember Harold Wilson standing in my mother's hall. He was the bloody Prime Minister and he was still out on the knocker. Without the terrorists trying to take a pop at him. Yeah, he's themselves out of reach now, haven't they? Mm. Hey. You think they can just use the telly or the papers, but they're all daft now too, aren't they? Hey? I mean, telly's just for your kids who buy stuff from the adverts in between, isn't it? Hey, that's what your telly is. So the politicos think that they have to sound bite to a bunch of snotty-nosed kids who don't experience a life of Quarantino movies and what some daft brat from a reality show tells them. I can remember when the telly meant something. You know, you watched the documentary, you watched the drama, and it made you think about life, you know, and not whether you had the right wallpaper to match your kex. I mean, what's all that about? And newspapers, they were about what was going on in the world, you know, not what was going on in the back of some limo or some trendy bar in London. See, these days, it's all about lifestyles, isn't it? You know, not values. And you know where that is, don't you? Yeah, I do. I know this one. Cultural elites. It never changes, Jimmy. They just wear different suits and do different jobs. But they're all at the same dinner parties, aren't they? Well, they don't control people's wages with the stovepipe hats. But they control what we see, what we read, you know, what we hear. Because it's what they want us to see and hear and read. You know, their values, what keeps them in power. And uh, all the little green fellas and all. Uh, yeah, all right, Snicky, hard clock. You can laugh, but I'm telling you, we're heading for meltdown because the people at the top you know, are totally out of touch with those at the bottom. They've just lost it. They just don't understand how to do it anymore. You know, whether it's like hiding from the terrorists or thinking that their mates in the media can do it for them, you know, they've just... Well, they're just totally isolated in their glass offices in London. Yeah. I mean, take food. Where does all that food come from? If I say the shops, I'll lose points, won't I? No, you won't. You'll gain them. Because that is the point. So you didn't say from the farmers, did you? Like I used to. Like, you know, people used to, you know, growing up round here. Yeah? I mean, when are sprouts in season? <coughs> I don't know. Beans, potatoes, barley, you know, uh, carrots, apples. So you don't know because you've lost touch, haven't you? I mean, we all have. We've all lost touch. You know, you were like the Incas, we were like the Aztecs. You know why they died out, don't you? Because... Everybody wanted to enjoy life. They all wanted a better lifestyle. So they all down tools in the fields, right? Stopped growing stuff, yeah? And moved to the cities. Took a year, yeah? Nobody out there growing food, all starved to death in a year. Whole civilizations. One year. Tried the dinosaurs. Not enough grub. You're toast. You're definitely on one here, Jim. Listen, I know it sounds far-fetched, but how long did it take to bring this country to its knees during that fuel demo? Hey, how long? Three days! And there's no point having warehouses full of meat and two veg in Peru with no means of getting them here, is there? Hey? I mean, people think famines are something that happened in Africa or Bangladesh or in the past. I mean, half the country don't even know. It's only 50 years since they ended rationing here. No wonder they're making it easier and easier to get drink, to get off your heads, to get your generation off their backs. Yeah. For us getting off our heads also means we're paying all the taxes as well, remember? Exactly. So why don't they just face up to drugs too? You know, and really tackle it. Control it like they do booze, education, quality control, taxation. So that the likes of the fella who lived over there can't wreck everyone's lives. I'm totally with you, Jim. Or, are we really going to change anything? Sat here on two wild armchairs, burning your furniture. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just try and enjoy the rest of your life. 
before you starve to death. No wonder it's lit for today. No wonder the telly and the press and politics are like they are. You know, no one can see any points anymore. Never mind, I have one. I suppose that's how they con people into religion, isn't it? Hey, no points in anything here, so we must be on our way to something better. Come on, now it is definitely time to get off if you're going to start on religion. Yeah, I suppose it is time to get off, isn't it? But there's just one more thing I want to do. No one else is going to do that with you, Jim? Too right, the words. It's like putting nails in your own coffin, and you don't often get the chance to do that. If you say so. Yeah. Right, is that it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, what are we going to do about these? Have you worked out what you're doing with them bricks yet? Knock off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, uh, kid. Here's the shit architect. to get on with. Stop! Stop! There's something I forgot to do. Are you okay, Jim? Something naughty, what he said. Jimmy, what is he? Indeed, it's goodbye to Brookside, but hello to Hollyoaks five nights a week. And there's a late night special tomorrow. Details upcoming. Next tonight, a double bill of The Secret Life of Us.